Welcome to Cycles TV. This session of the Market Cycles Report is intended exclusively to provide information and education to help individuals better understand cycles and the markets. However, this information is not to be construed as professional advice as to the buying and selling of securities. In no event does the host express any opinion with respect to, or make recommendations regarding, the purchase or sale of any particular investment instrument. There is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. Buying or selling decisions are solely within the personal discretion of each individual. And now, enjoy the show. Here is your host. <laughs> Welcome to the foundation for the study of cycles. My name is Lars Fontine and as always, I'm very happy to have you here. Monday, same time, same place, Cycles TV. Let's discuss about cycle analysis and the financial markets. As you might have seen on the announcement for today, I've called it Cycles Jam because I have some topics to talk about, but not a real new analysis. And there are some strange things in the global US equity markets, which makes it quite hard for cycle analysis or for any analyst, even for technical analysts out there. You can make a, a bullish or a bearish case so it depends just on what you want to see in these markets. And therefore, let's also discuss the same situation in regards to cycles for today. That's the key topic. Um, as I'm live, feel free to drop in your questions while we are streaming here. So I want to pull in your questions live. And um, yeah, let's just think about what do US equity markets tell us today? Um, we have hard times. Everyone has hard times out there. So um, let's revisit some cycle analysis. Let's try to discuss what the current situation and reasoning might be. So starting with um, some data sets here. Mm, this is the S&P 500 index. And just zooming in, First here in that case, this is where we are today. Let's even make it a little bit larger here. Um, you might remember that in February, I showed you different reasons um, expecting a top in global US equities. I think from even from March, uh, February to March, I continuously repeated this analysis here and there's no change. Yeah for all that. So there's nothing new to show you in regards to analysis, but it depends now on which index we look. So um, since since this point in time here, so February, and I repeated the, uh, the situation here, it looks like the S&P um, is in rally mode and is against the cycles prediction moving upward, or at least it depends if we have a long term or short term view. So that's what I said. We have hard times using the S&P index daily um, to at least price is not confirming the current cycle projection we have here on the short term analysis. And this is what I want to review with you. Um, and I'm not sure if this is a reasoning and I don't want to excuse the, the wrong analysis for today. So I'm not here to explaining why something didn't work. It's a more explaining what are my thoughts around cycle analysis in this kind of situation? And I think this will happen more than just once. So the situation we have today is in different data sets often there. So first, we have conflicting, conflicting cycles from a daily to weekly. This could be one argument. We never know which force is stronger on the weekly or on the daily. So, but let's start here with the daily analysis. Um, Looking into the spectrum, we could choose maybe the shortest cycle with 80 days. Yeah, which is, as I said, current here in the downswing. Um, again, since since March, I first showed you this year in February, then we are again in the downswing. But cycles, uh, a price still seems not to be happy with this daily downswing. We could even add the 92 cycle again, downswing since even since March here, which I showed you. So there's no real daily cycle, which is pointing to an upward cycling move here. So the daily cycles show us still downward 
cyclic projections. And we can even bring in one of my favorite analysis we did here often on this channel um, using Apple, because maybe you all know that the, the current up move in the major indices is, is due to four or five global um, equities here, like the big tech companies like, I don't know, Apple, Google, Nvidia, um, Microsoft, I think these four to five companies just drive the index higher. So then let's switch to let's switch to Apple. Let's analyze one of these mega caps here with a cycle analysis. And I'm referring now to this cycle this cyclic model here because I used it very often in previous analysis. So this is just this is just an analysis I did here in beginning of March. Yeah, you see it down down here below. This is analysis beginning of March, and these three cycles I often shared them with you. So it really helped us to even last year, yeah, to detect the top here. So this composite model really was spot on last year. Yeah, the top in September. I insisted on this model here. I think in we, we discussed it in October. Yeah, that there is no bullish um, um, trend coming into market that we should expect the down move into the end of last year, which is exactly what happened. And by the way, this proved us um, to expect an up move into March, which happened. So th that's also what I wanted to share. We are coming from this projection where we had the up move confirmation on the di daily cycles for February, March. And this, this model here just using Apple also was and is still predicting now the downward move on daily cycles just analyzing Apple. And we can switch to the current analysis. I just wanted to bring in it because just remember here the, the cycle length. 135 days, 170 days and 80 days, right? These are the key dominant cycle based from March. And if I now switch to the current analysis, you see here 135, 168, and 81. So this is the, the principle of variation, which is quite nice. We see more or less the same nominal cycles. They slightly shifted in length and phase, but still the same three cycles here. And you see now this is the actual composite with latest data on the screen. Yeah, and you see even this composite with latest data I mean, the, the top has now shifted more to the future, but even beginning April, still projecting in the cyclic downward phase of the daily cycles from that model. And you see the general outline of this model, or the, 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 the shape has not changed. Here, so the major top in August, down move into end of the year, then the upswing we expected early this year into February, March, yeah, and then the down move. Um, so this is where we are in the cycle, but you see here the, the, the conflict, the, the cycle is projecting downwards from here, um, but prices keep moving upwards from here. So on the daily cycles, doesn't matter if we use the indices, um, if we switch to then one of the mega caps, daily cycles seem not to have any impact on price or price is just ignoring daily cycles, whatever is the reason. So I have no clue um, what is driving current price activity. At least daily cycles models cannot explain this behavior from a timing perspective. Yeah, we are talking about timing. So that's just, I mean, I, I, I think you have seen similar uh, behavior. So that's where we are on the daily. That's why I call it cycles jam. I have no conclusion or recommendation today. Let's switch to the weekly. And the weekly cycles are quite interesting. As I always say, this summer will be the point in time when the long-term cycles roll over. We have now this summer. However, the weekly does not help us in fine-tuning the timing. We, we just have weekly models. So let's switch to the weekly model. It's rainy outside, yeah. Can you hear it, by the way? I, know, I mean, it's rainy. We have thunderstorms here right now. Can you hear it? Looks like, yeah? Okay. But uh, I hope it is not disrupting you. Um, weekly model. Weekly model. This is the S&P weekly. Uh, using, using latest, latest data, S&P. Um, and we, again, 
the cycle with the length of 182 weeks, yeah, which is the most dominant one here, is, is the cycle we are monitoring since the end of 2021, yeah, which guided us and indicated the major top ahead of time back that time. And through the whole year of 2022, I repeated looking at this long-term cycle, which always showed us that this summer should be a major bottom from the long-term cycle. And you see where we are in the cycle. And I used the last session last week to give you a kind of clue. Um, if we are ahead of the possible bottom or if we have passed already the timing perspective, which the weekly will give us no clue here, yeah, right? It, it shows like we are currently arriving at the bottoming timing. Uh, but even I don't know if we are now before this possible bottom or have we passed already the bottom and this could leave us that we, from a long-term perspective, we are already in the upswing. Um, so that's That's why I think even the weekly leaves us a little bit clueless here. Yeah, I mean, we, we are just on, on alert that this summer there's the possibility that this down move we have seen through 2022 will come to an end. I mean, that's from a timing perspective, this is something. But we are now in summer. We want to fine tune our timing uh, and daily cycles seem not to help us here, right? So that's why I call it Cycles Jam. Um, I don't have the black box. Uh, I don't have some um, magic moments uh, here. This is pure time cycle analysis. And sometimes it's just failing on this asset class, right? So therefore, I want to review it with you, together with you. And then what even puzzles me even more, as, as, as discussed, okay, the, the global daily index cycles and price are not in alignment right now. Um, we we have analyzed the apple. So now let's, as as it seems like the indices are disrupted by these four to five big tech uh, companies, let's switch to the S and P 500 equal weight. Yeah, which which by the way gives us a quite different perspective. Um, so that, let's let's this is like treating these five, four to five mega cap in uh, um, companies equal to all other S&P 500 um, um, companies, which, which will yeah, neutralize the, the, the heavy impact of these mega cap um, um, companies on the overall index. And you see that this index, um, which by the way, this is where February, March, yeah, where um, This is still confirming the the projection we did last year, yeah, which which we said okay, down downward 2022, yeah. Then the the upswings, oh, the uh, this is the end. Sorry, uh, this is the end into into this period here, and then the upswing early this year, yeah. And then you know that since February and March, I'm reiterating that the daily cycles show the downturn, which Just looking at the equal weight index looks quite nice. And I mean, we still make lower highs. Yeah. So, so there is no, there is no new high. There's no uptrend as it looks like in the S&P now making a new high. The big large cap, cap um, attacks making new highs this year. But this is not seen in the equal weight. So... I'm really not sure what to use if to analyze global U.S. equity markets. The equal weight seems to follow the downward da daily cycle model very well. As you know, that the cycle analysis in the S&P 500 a daily shows us a downward cycle, the index and an apple. We can see this is confirmed in the equal weight index, so ignoring the large cap companies. I mean, if we look at the broader S&P 500 or just one single company of the equal weight, um, the cycles are out of sync with these four to five companies. Equal weight is still in. So that's where it makes cycle analysis quite difficult, not so easy. Um, and I think that's, that's the situation most analysts, researchers, technical experts 
uh, fundamental analysis uh, out there have these days, um, it's hard to find an explanation um, which explains the price move and gives the projections. So looking at the equal weight, I would uh, continue that way. Uh, looking at the global indices or the large tech companies like Apple, cycles don't work right now. And we are still in the very interesting period, summer this year, um, where a bottom is, is taking place. But this still can mean that we will have a final downward move and then move up. So we need to monitor the daily cycles to confirm that. I just wanted to share my situation with you. Um, if you have any clue out there, uh, just let me know. I'm interested in your perspective um, to learn something. But now to follow up a little bit on that, um, we have something new, um, which I'm often referring to here in, in this session, which will now also come to your cycle analysis dashboard. You know that I'm often introducing that we can use the detected cycle length from our cycle analysis, from the dominant cycles, to fine-tune technical indicators. That's, that's one learning um, which seems to be not, not often communicated or not well known also in the technical analysis community. So therefore, you know me that I'm, I'm sharing this knowledge here very often um, and it's not dependent on special technical indicators, but to even make it more easy, maybe you remember that in some um, um, Cycles TV episodes, I switched to a charting platform, ramped up a technical indicator, put in the length here, but you need to switch between the cycle analysis software and a technical analysis platform um, and then convert the links over to your charting platform. So yeah, there are some manual steps in there. More important is you have the knowledge, but now we made it even more easy for you. And you also know that I'm a fan of a cyclic smoothed relative strength indicator which is no secret source. I've written or published even the, the code on that, but I've, we've now made it more easy for you. We have integrated this in the Cycles platform. So you can now directly, when you have done your cycle analysis in the cycle analyzer, ramp up the technical indicator, which automatically has the right length setting for you and gives you the technical confirmation right on the chart. Um, so therefore, I wanted to show it with you. It's a new feature. It's coming to you. Um, and let's discuss this in a second. What this gives us for maybe additional information based to the discussion I had just previous. Okay, that's just the introduction. Um, you might see once we launch the new version um, and end May, so it's two weeks from now, it's, uh, we, we are in the final making. I think if you're on the wait list, you will receive the invitation for for the next two weeks. So we will start working backwards or downwards from the wait list of the new launch. I hope you have registered just to manage the volume. Yeah, we, we cannot just open it for everyone. We need to give you some upfront information. So what, what you see here is already the version um, which will come to you. So here's a new icon. Yeah, you see it here. This is a new icon. And if you hover over it, it's labeled CRSI on off. Yeah, that's it. Just pushing a button. Um, this will bring up my favorite cycles, cycle RSI indicator. It's coded now directly into the cycle analyzer. And it's using, what surprise, automatically the detected dominant cycles. So you no, do not need to roll over um, this information on your own. Yeah, so let's switch to the Let's clear the cycles model here. Oh, by the way, yeah, okay, I can talk it in a second here. So let's just use this information and switch on now the cyclic RSI indicator. And ta-da, you see it here down below, like on any technical platform. You see now this indicator showing up using the right settings. And you know that once you have tuned it to the market vibration or the dominant cycle, it will be much more readable so here we have a clear indication of this top here. Here, once it crosses the down bands, the low here, um, here the low, here, yeah, this low. So then we had here, this was the low here. And then you know that the, the major low at this point in time here. 
So the, the key turning points have been detected. And um, that's the reason now what you see here, why we saw, and I repeated this analysis in February, the, the indicator gave us this uh, technical um, overboard condition. And you see where we are since, since late March. Yeah? So also the technical condition on this indicator is showing us the same reading. Yeah? So even from a technical perspective, I cannot see any positive signs showing up here. Um, and you know that the reading of this indicator is, um, yeah, one of the best, um, uh, ignoring a lot of whipsaw trades in the past. So um, the beauty is now that you have this now um, on your chart with just a mouse click. Um, on, on, on every chart, so you are here now, let's do the same for Apple. Let's um, analyze the cyclic RSI, let's make it even better, better, bigger, better. <laughs> yeah, um, that's why I issued um, the possible downswing could start at this point in time here. Um, and you see now what happens, and this is very rare, this is not very often. You see here, this indication is really, really hovering at this upper level here while price is continues, continuing to rise. So I don't see this very often on this technical indicator here. And you also see that the, the past indication have been clearly yeah, the major sell signals here or even yeah, the bottom here. Or the, let's call it interim bottom. bottom. You see there are almost no whipsaw signals and then only the bottom here and here. So that's it. Not more signals from this indicator. Yeah? One sell, buy, 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 sell, and we are still on a, on a sell signal here from the technical condition. And just keep in mind that this indicator is using the dominant cycle information uh, to fine-tune uh, the length setting here. Um, which, yeah, removes the need for you to switch now to a technical platform and open open this um, um, on your price chart. So this is the first time why we now combine dynamic time cycle analysis with technical analysis of the price behavior in relation to the dominant cycle used for this calculation. Yeah, you can just switch it on and off. And I think that's a clear um, new benefit for all of us, simplifying at least the decision-making process if price is confirming our time-based projections from the dynamic time cycles. This, this is the way I always recommend to use the combination. Use the time cycles to find the timing and then use price and technical analysis to verify the technical price condition. And if both is in alignment, then we have these um, signals we are all looking for. Yeah, that's it for today. So one new feature, just sharing with you my pain as a cycle analysis and analyst I currently have with the global US equity markets. Not all markets, other markets work very well. I think that the top in gold is working out nicely. Just look back two or three weeks. Um, the analysis on gas I did. So other assets seem still to work. Just the daily US markets seem to do something strange these days. Um, let's see how this works out. Yeah, um, let's review some of your questions. Uh, that's just for today. It's just a short jamming session, also discussing situations when cycles seem not to work. So, I mean, we see this is not the holy grail. This is not the only thing we can trust if, if doing these things. There are situations when cycle analysis will let you or just leave you clueless. And um, at least for this asset class, daily timing, um, that's the situation right now. Throw in your comments, throw in different analysis or um, analysis you know from other experts to put into the mix. I think we all need to learn from the current market and price action and how to, yeah, sort out cycles not to trust, sort out cycles to trust. I think that's the key knowledge we all need in cycle analysis. Detecting cycles is easy, but which cycles to pick for the projection on the right side of the path? That's the key knowledge uh, 
yeah, we're all trying to discover and get better and better and better every day with new data. And that's why we are here having this live session. Okay. Uh, rain, by the way, is gone here on my end, but I learned, uh, Mark, that uh, you also had some storms uh, there. So it's not only me, but here the thunderstorms have now passed by. Um, yeah, that's a good topic, Florian. Could it make sense to analyze the New York Stocks and Chain Fang Index on a weekly basis? Um, yeah, it's a good point. So this is then um, having the kind of basket with these uh, Fang stocks in there to see cycles maybe just driving uh, the Fang and then maybe decouple it from the, for example, equal weight S&P, which is more or less neutralizing the the big impact of these fun, big cap um, um, companies. And then we need to differentiate the analysis of, of the FUNG index and the equal, equal weight index. Um, and I think it looks like that the analysis between these both will be different. So um, yes, a very good recommendation and I will take it into account. Maybe I just need to prepare then for next week to get an idea up front. If, if you know the New York Stock Exchange Fang Index on Yahoo Finance, please drop a note here or put it in the chat so it makes it easier for me even to look it up. Um, and this brings me also to, to a topic which I think moving forward with cycle analysis in the, at least the US, even not global um, equity markets, I think we need to pay more attention to different sectors because just analyzing the broad index might not give us any clue on in cycle analysis because the cyclic behavior in different sectors might now be different in the future. In the past, they all moved more or less in the same general direction, which kind of this character of the markets changed in the big top early 2022. We moved down and now there's some realignment, different sectors behave differently. So I think a cycle analysis just on the overall market, yeah, for sure we can detect cycles in the overall market, but maybe it's, it's worthless or it's useless because we need to do our cycle analysis on individual sectors like the fung index or the tech sector, the banking sector, the mid, uh, mid-sized um, company sector, and then to follow these cycles individually because they might not be in sync. Yeah, so therefore just mixing them up in the large index will not be of any use. At least this is what I'm trying to do during the last weeks to monitor more cycles in sectors. And second, not only sectors, I think also from a global perspective, we need to differentiate it in regions. So in the past, the US markets have mostly been the leading index. So cycles in the US markets have then anyhow also been useful for European markets. Um, that's also not the case. If you if you see that how the US and the European markets have decoupled, so or or at least the the premium you paid on the US markets is now becoming more high. So the the, the European markets rallied more than the equal weight US markets. So it seems like cycles in Europe or European countries seems to be different or not following the US cycles anymore. Maybe the US is is um, losing the global leading role. Maybe regional cycles are more important now for different countries. So I, I, I've not a final conclusion on that, but, but it looks like that what we did in the past, US main markets, cycle analysis, do it, and then you have a general clue for the stock markets even worldwide. Mm, no, it does not work anymore. In the US, we need to pay more attention to individual sectors. Second, we need to differentiate cycle analysis uh, also in different regions. So Europe and US, they, they are out of sync. Europe works better than US. Um, that's my lessons learned from the past weeks. And I'm sharing this lessons learned because this gives us some clues how we need to apply cycle analysis if we want to derive successful solutions into the future. Yeah? And this is what I will do the next 
weeks here on Cycles TV, I will pay more attention to different sectors, to different regions. Therefore, and I think you, you brought it up here, um, um, not, not the US debt ceiling, that's that's also an, an, a good topic, but um, I, I mixed it up. Um, we need to take into account currencies and, and the US dollar versus the euro might also not disrupt, but cycles in currencies might also impact how from an international investor's perspective, so I'm now coming from the European Union, looking at US markets, it's also impacted by the exchange rate between the euro and the and the dollar, at least if I want to invest in, in these markets, if I'm not doing hedging. I mean, that's that's what, what something for professional funds. They, they will anyhow hedge the currency risks. But if we are not doing this, we need to take into account also the, the different exchange rate. And this on the one hand, it makes it more complex. On the other hand, this is where you can derive um, the edge doing cycle analysis. Because if you know these different cycles in regions, sectors, and currencies, um, and when this all comes into alignment, I mean, if they are all in disagreement, um, you should not derive trade conclusions from the cycle's perspective. But if they speak the same language, yeah, so currency exchange rate, sectors, and maybe markets, then that's what we are looking for at that cycle analysis. But it, it requires more time. It requires more time. It's not as easy as that. But maybe that's why we also prepared the cycle analyzer. You set up your dashboard, you set up your favorite um, asset classes, and then can click. Then I brought now the technical indicator right into it. So we really make it simpler and simpler for you yeah, to apply the cycle analysis. Um, and then you will also be able to analyze different markets and classes and derive your topics. Um, yeah, and William, you, you brought it in. Um, it's correct. Uh, second now, I wanted to show that. William, yeah, the US debt ceiling issue could be something throwing off normal market flow. Some people say the US government. Yeah, that, that's that's what I tried to show you in the beginning. Now, cyclists cannot explain the current upswing run in, in these large five companies, which disrupt any index. And by the way, if the index is disrupted, also every analysis you're applying to this kind of data set is disrupted. So, and now talking about data science, it's also an interesting topic. If you know about data science, you, sh you should know about how to handle outliners. So if, if an index or 500 sensor data points, every day you use 500 sensors, a sensor to derive your index. It's, it's like similar if you think about Internet of Things, you have 500 different sensors giving you data and you average them. And then five, five of these sensors seems to deliver stupid data. You would handle these as outliners and take these outliners out of your normal data set because otherwise it would disrupt these outliners, these big outliners which are overweighted in the overall index, just disrupt the overall data set. So from a data science perspective, you can also think about how to handle the situation if, if just, I don't know, 1% of, 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 of the data disrupts the other 99% of the index. So a lot of questions showing up also from how you prepare data sets before applying cycle analysis. I mean, if you are in this uh, data analysis area, and I'm coming from the engineering perspective here, you know that a lot of hard work goes into the preparation of data sets before applying whatever analysis you're doing, also cycle analysis, you need to prepare the data sets. D-trend, um, reducing the noise level, outliners out. And if we have, I mean, it's too much noise, you could also argue this discussion here brings too much noise into the overall index. And if you have too much noise out there, you're not able to detect the signal anymore. So, and if that, that's the case currently, that these five megatech companies disrupt the index, it's too much noise out there. You cannot apply digital signal processing. That's the situation. Too much noise out there. I'm not, I don't know if this is the, the root cause, but um, this is what we need to think about these days uh, might happen there. 
Ähm, okay. FNGU, Bank of Montreal Funk Tracking. Ah, that's very interesting. Um, thanks, new mister. Uh, that's a bullish and bearish kind of sentiment data, right? So that would be interesting to try to derive cycles uh, from this sentiment, if it is sentiment information, not finally sure. But um, thanks for bringing that up. As I said, for, for next week, I will anyhow prepare more sector-specific data. So definitely looking at the FANG sector or index and maybe then even the bullish and bearish, bearish sentiment would would be really interesting. So this will show up next week. This is what I promise. Analyzing cycles in the tech sector fung and maybe using the sentiment data. Um, that's something we need to do anyhow. Um, yeah, then maybe just to conclude for today's session, um, that's that's the reason we brought it in. I think this is um, from technical analysis. It's an edge anyhow. You have now here directly in the cycle analysis platform. So it's one of the best technical indicators anyhow. Um, and you have directly one view, one click. You have it uh, in addition to the timing analysis. Outliner. <laughs> outliner. <laughs> I'm not sure what I... <laughs> outliner. Outlier. Um, thanks for the... Just for the wording phrase. Um, yeah, but then Thomas, I also see this question here. Is there a cycle and that's on the US election? Yeah, um, it is. Um, and it's a, it's a good topic maybe to bring it up here also to push in some data set. I mean, we need to manually upload this data. Um, different ways to do it. I mean, there's this uh, four-year cycle. You, you can analyze a kind of four-year cycle and how markets behaved in this four-year cycle related to U.S. elections. So this is often common, commonly uh, used, like seasonality, seasonality based on the four-year U.S. election cycle. Um, so I agree with you. That's an interesting topic we should discuss here. And I need to check which data set is the most appropriate for do this. But I will also take this for the next week. Let's talk a little bit about, about data sets, US election cycles, because I think that's interesting for us all. Um, and the, the tech sector um, I mentioned anyhow already. Um, okay. Yeah, um, Bitcoin, 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 Bitcoin. I know you're all re interested in that. Um, first of all, the long-term analysis I did in January is now uh, coming to a uh, conclusion. So you know that I, in short, I always told, or the long-term cycle analysis told, um, that from January to May is a good period to accum accum to get bullish on a Bitcoin because after May, from a long-term perspective, we have a long upswing cycle phase which is starting now or has started some weeks ago. So this would be interesting how it plays out. And you're right, we should um, update this with a uh, daily cycle analysis on Bitcoin. Um, next time, Bitcoin update. Yeah, um, for the pro version, please register for the launch event, which is coming to the during the next two weeks. We will start working from top to bottom with the um, um, registered users for the session. So there's you, you don't need to subscribe or price it, just register to be part of the launch event. So and then you will get firsthand information during the next two weeks when we roll it out. Um, part by part, uh, um, if you're interested, but the information is, is free for everyone anyhow. Um, Ned Davis Research published a market projection chart that applies equal weight to annual season and in four-year presidential election cycles. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing I wanted to uh, mention, this four-year um, US um, election cycle which you could then add to additional seasonal uh, cycle models here and build a composite on that. And that's um, new, new Mr. 
Um, that's what I, I will take away um, for sure for the next um, discussions here. And, and Thomas, you, you also brought this question up, yeah, to bring in data on US elections. So this is the second topic I will take away. And I said, we need to analyze different sectors and the US elections, or at least data, seasonal data we can use on this um, would be more interesting. So that's it for today. Lessons learned for today and from your comments. Um, I will have a closer look at the fun index and cycles specifically related to that. And if you have the bullish, the, the bearish, you have measured, m mentioned the ETF. So I will take attention to your comments here um, and write some notes down. Um, second topic is uh, the US elections. So I will also check which data set could be used and use it for one of the next sessions and a Bitcoin analysis. So these three takeaways. Um, and on the other hand, I hope at least the, the jam session to share a little bit my thinking about what conclusions we draw out of the current behavior is something which I think every analyst will in these days think about. So that's it. That's my view on current cycle analysis. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I hope to see you again uh, next week. 